go. Okay, now we're live on the fourth episode? No, fifth episode. Anyways, it doesn't matter because it's been a while since we've done one of these. And uh, this week we are going to be talking about the red pilling of Lacey Green, quotation mark, um, The Handmaid's Tale, and updates on Secret Empire. And we're going to jump into Secret Empire first because uh, it's a little bit more fresh in my mind. Uh, we're now two episodes into the main series after the uh, the first story arc finished here. Okay, so when we last left off, Captain America was revealed to have burnt, been turned evil by a cube. Was that it? Yeah, that was that was it. The cube um, had turned him evil, and then he picked up Thor's hammer, and then he did he smash the cube with a hammer? No, the um, I know. I guess that that happened somewhere else. The the cube was sort of scattered around the planet. Um, the Thor's hammer thing actually didn't happen until the uh, the free comic book day issue which came out after that episode, believe it or not, and after the first full issue. Um, you know, it, it's it's a little tougher talking about that now because I, I left such a gap between last shows, but um, that's the gist of it. Um, you know, Cap took over the country, you know. Hydra's so is, he like, is he like President Captain America now? Um, you can say President Maybe maybe dictator might be a little bit more of an appropriate term. And Definitely. so, and he's being aided by an army of not Nazis but Hydra people. Yeah, of uh, Hydra agents, and that's um, that's really where it's been left off um, going into issue one. And you know, the thing about issue one is it with all the action of what went down to the new status quo uh, in issue zero, it, it took time to just kind of like show you what's going on. You got to see, you know, a kid go to school and what school is now like under, you know, the Hydra rule. You know, it's not too interesting, but it's what you would expect. You know, okay. Now I'm interested. What is, what is school like under the Hydra rule? You've seen red Dawn, right? So they're all they're all taught to worship the worship Hydra. Pretty much, that's exactly what it is. They're they're suddenly told the Hydra version of history and whatnot. And you know, if you talk about the old version, well, they tend to haul you off for re-education. So, so what kind of time period are we talking about here? How long is we? What what's the time span between Captain America taking over the United States and them having their own curriculum up and ready? I would have to say it's it's pretty quick. Um, just judged on what some of the other characters are going on, there's no way that it could have been more than maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so. So it's been about a month. So do you suppose they had the Hydra curriculum ready in advance? Oh, they absolutely did. They were they were planning this way in advance, um, without a doubt. So that means that out there somewhere, there's like a Hydra school board, a Hydra yeah. curriculum designer. There's without a doubt, making little cutesy pictures of Hydra for the Hydra textbooks. Yeah, one hundred percent. There, there would definitely have to be uh, someone out there that's doing all that stuff um you know you know hydra's pretty organized so they um they, they thought are ahead. on top of their game man if they are that on top of their game you know just just let them run the place yeah and um so yeah how so long, with how long has the u.s been trying to get a curriculum put together and they do <laughs> it they just ready to go boom they're they're all set yeah I, I, you know, I think that's one of the things because, like, early on in the story, it's not just that though. You have Hydra that's like rebuilding factories and stuff. Generally speaking, they're they're actually doing some good stuff. Huh. Uh, granted, it is a totalitarian government, um, and there's definitely, you know, like I said, it's it's definitely some of the the rebuilding that's going on. Uh, and with with that being said, of how efficient things are. 
the Hydra Avengers team, which um, they just took out this one monster that showed up out of nowhere with so much ease. So this was an alien monster? I don't know if it was like an alien or magic or something. It was just it was just a monster showed up in the middle of Colorado and was trying to terrorize everything or was threatening to take over the planet. But, well, what happened to the aliens? Last I heard, there were a bunch of uh, aliens, you know, hanging out. Yeah, they're still they're still trying to attack the planet with the defenses up. Okay, um, so, so they so the defenses are up and they can't get through the defenses. Right. But yeah, there's a bunch of heroes that are trapped in space as a consequence. But, but there's still like monsters showing up. Yeah, like I said, so I think this was like something that was different. Um, you know, like I said, it's been a while since I've I've read the first issue because of the the gap we've had here in time. But here's the the bigger kicker is the the Hydra sponsored Avengers team mm-hmm. which uh features Taskmaster, uh, ta- uh, Taskmaster, Deadpool, um, what was it the Vision, and Scarlet Witch? I don't know any of them except Deadpool. So, so tell me about Taskmaster. What's Taskmaster's deal? Okay, so Taskmaster, he he's um, he's always sort of been this. Um, how do I put it? He, he's been a villain. He's a mercenary, much like Deadpool. He basically trains the bad guys. That's the best I can say about Taskmaster. Um, you know, he he did he did briefly team up with the Covert Ops Avengers team a few years ago, um, but there's there's not much more to say about that. And yeah, I know he's worked with Deadpool. He was at at Deadpool's bachelor party in you know a few issues back, a couple a couple years ago. Who did Deadpool marry? Uh, he married this woman, Sheikla, who I think she's like a succubus demon. Well, she rules a monster city. Um, yeah, I know this, this stuff's getting out there, and I, 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 I haven't been keeping up with Deadpool as much as I was. But from what I heard, it sounds like that that marriage was off. Um, so now, now he has an ex-wife who is a succubus who runs a monster city. Yeah. Do we know what the ex-wife who is a succubus who runs a monster city thinks about him working for the evil Avengers team? Um, honestly, we have no clue. Oh, and there is actually one even bigger kicker about um, this Avengers team. The Odin son, which is uh, Thor, the depowered Thor that we all know and love, is on the team as well. He's, a, he's on the evil Avengers team? Yeah. So well, why why is everyone helping evil Avengers? Well, I mean, keep in mind though, um, if you think about it though, with the series, this is still the Captain America we know and love. He's just working for Hydra, you know. I thought, he, I thought he was a different Captain because now he was transformed by a space cube. Well, different as in his history was a little altered, but I think his moral compass is still kind of there, which is something that gets explained as the series goes on and it becomes even more clear at, you know, in the middle of issue two. Okay. That, um, you know, even though his history was altered and he was a Hydra plant, you know, he still has some of those good qualities in him. Um, but yeah, basically going back to this team, like I said, they took out the monster and you have a team that surprisingly mixed with, um, more good guys than villains, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. The the Vision, who's been a pretty regular Avenger, and same with the Scarlet Witch, both which have been featured in the recent Avengers movies. Um, and that was kind of explained how that, that happened in the, the free comic book day issue. Um, I guess the, the Vision got reprogrammed and somehow the, the Scarlet Witch got persuaded. Um but with that, with that being said, I, I think Thor's addition is probably the most interesting uh, in that regard. So and, what, 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 what are they doing now in this? In this what fight? are they doing? Yeah. 
So I basically, say, that that was sounds a, like the biggest train wreck. It sounds like a like a middle school kid wrote it, or you know, it was made by pulling <laughs> like names out of a hat. We'll just put all the superhero names in a hat, and then whoever we pull out is working for the bad guys now. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty much how these these things go. Um, you know, that's that's your typical event comic right there. You know, they're they're gonna do these really off the wall team ups and whatnot. And, you know, that's, you know, I mean, that, that's kind of the draw I would have to say. Um, but, you know, you, you, you take it as it, as it comes and it's, um, you know, it's, it's still very early to go to see where that's going to pay off. But with that all being said, um, our, you know, our, the characters that in it, are, you know, there it, it makes for the interesting read. And to a degree, um, at least going back to Deadpool and going back to the Odinson, both of them have always had sort of a respect for Captain America that is, um, you know, sort of unmatched. So it's, I think that's kind of why they're on the team. You know, that would make sense. Plus, you know, a morally gray area that Deadpool's always been makes him sort of a good choice for that. Yeah, he's a mercenary after all, and uh, you know, when Hydra comes knocking or writing the checks for the right price, and you know, Cap wants you on his team, you know, how could he say no? Fair enough. I guess we will look forward to where else that goes in the future. Please keep me updated. <laughs> will do. So yeah, so that was that was pretty much issue one. Um, issue two, it kind of expanded more on that. Um, I guess one of, one of the big shockers from that issue was a, a guy that posed as uh, Cap's former sidekick, uh, Bucky. I think in this case it was Rick Flag. Um, he got some intel about the cube that I guess the other heroes didn't know about. So it's like you know they they sort of get that intel in the second issue and they start planning their, their resistance and how to get the cube so they can fix everything. So the goal now is to fix the cube who will fix evil Captain America. Yeah, that's the ideal. And, um, you know, that's at least that's one of the stories that's going to be going on. Um, another interesting part was, uh, if you recall from issue zero, a whole bunch of heroes that were in New York got trapped in the dark dimension, um, which basically New York sort of just got cut off from the rest of the world. And uh, resources are pretty scarce. And the um, there's a lot of street level heroes that are kind of, you know, trapped in New York. And I thought one of the most interesting things was... Um, I believe it was Dagger of Cloak and Dagger fame. They're going to get a new show on Freeform. I don't know if that'll be worth watching. But um, <clears throat> what had happened was um, at one point, they were I guess they were attacked by some demons. And out of nowhere, uh, a guy shows up claiming to be Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Captain America. But he wasn't in the Captain America suit. Um so somehow an alternate reality Captain America showed up. So I, I don't know what to make of that. There's, uh, there's really two possibilities where the story can go now. Well, I guess we will have to see. Yes. And I guess, uh, you know, since Secret Empire is on the subject of totalitarian uh, governments, um, it's worth bringing up uh, The Handmaid's Tale, which is among one of the worst books I've ever had to read. Uh, has recently become a Hulu hit sensation. Um, is, it, is it actually a hit? Is it is it doing well, or is it another one that uh, is just you know getting a lot of push, like HBO's Girls? It, it could be getting a lot of push. Um, I've only seen maybe like one person on Facebook really talk about The Handmaid's Tale, if that gives you any indication. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen advertisements for it pop up. 
maybe that's just because I thought about writing a scathing Amazon review at one point, and uh, you know that somehow got messed around in the online data pit. Okay. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it, definitely not a technical term. No. Um, not, no. But yeah, I mean the the Handmaid's Tale. Um, yeah, I I went to the movies fairly recently, actually several times, and before like each movie I saw was a preview for the Handmaid's Tale, and it was like really they're making this into a, a Hulu series. I mean, granted, there was a 1990s movie, but yeah, that was long forgotten. I had no idea it even existed. Now, yeah. I I don't know about the I you know I don't have Hulu. I don't have any plans to subscribe to Hulu anytime soon. Uh, e even if there is some good content on there. Um, but I mean it's you know it's it's worth interesting. I know you know I know we both sort of read what some other people on the internet have said about it that are from our corner of the internet. And uh, you know it's like I said, it, it was probably the most hated book that I've ever had to read and hated from my perspective because I just reading it was, Oh, it was bad. It was, um, it's on par with, uh, Lulu, the album that, uh, Metallica and Lou Reed made that nobody liked. <laughs> oh God. It, in my opinion, it was that bad. So it was like, you know, uh, it, it, it was a painful read, and it got to the point where um, I was just reading what I needed to do in order to write the essays to get the grade in the class, you know, standard uh, college academic slackery, if you want to call it. Well, that's what SparkNotes is for, right? Yes, and SparkNotes was very helpful for that, too. When I was in uh, high school, we had to read Huckleberry Finn, and I don't know why, but I decided that I wasn't going to read Huckleberry Finn no matter what. <laughs> and so I just decided to see how far I could go by not, without like knowing nothing about the book and just bullshitting everything. Mm -hmm. Going off stuff I vaguely remembered hearing during the class discussions. Got an A. It's just wow. because all of that English stuff is just, just useless bullshit. Yeah, it pretty much is. I mean, you know, the literary analysis, um, you know, and I, I know our former editor, Matt Forney, uh, you know, he majored in English and he does some good literary analysis. But for the average lay person, it, it really doesn't serve much of a function. Um, it gives you something to talk about, I guess. Um you know, but but with that being said, you know it. The you know the book, the characters are not necessarily all that likable, and I I feel like it's a really bad caricature of what a <clears throat> a Christian conservative society would look like. Um, just because it it was written in that time period where everyone was afraid of Reagan or Margaret Thatcher. It's the uh, same people who are currently freaking out about Trump. If it was written today, it would look probably kind of similar to Fifty Shades of Grey, just yeah. with slightly less uh, consensuality. Right, and uh, that's that's generally what what's what's going on with this. I, that's like one of the biggest things. I'm like, they're making this a movie. Obviously, you know, it's going to be by a bunch of people that are just upset with Trump. That's that's all it is. It's just, it's like, oh, you know what? Let's take this feminist dystopian novel. Those are popular right now, right? <laughs> and so that's, you know, that that's that was my first reaction when I found out that they were going to make uh, the Hulu series. And, uh, but yeah, but going back to what I said about that, it's it's one of those things to, to set up the story um in this dystopian world, uh, the country got hit with um, infertility, massive infertility across the board. And, uh, 
in in order to combat that, um, they decided to sort of have institutionalized. I'm not going to say it's it's necessarily rape because I think the women had the choice to opt in or opt out of being a handmaiden. Um, but what what it was is basically um, they became surrogates where they would end up having to be both a servant and sort of like a, a living womb essentially. And the, the idea was, um, you know, I guess these patriarchs wives were infertile. And so these women would be sort of the stand-ins for that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think the biggest cheek in that is like, really, he didn't think that maybe the men were infertile as well. Which, well, uh, I think this is not one of those things that rewards really detailed plot analysis. What it is, is, as near as I can tell, it is essentially fetish pornography. And there are a lot of essentially similar things in anime, just with the genders reversed. Uh, the one that immediately came to mind was, a, what was it called? Show me sample. Uh, show me sample. I was abducted, abducted by an elite all girls school as a sample commoner. <laughs> wow. Which is, uh, more or less just what it says on the tin, as they say, uh-huh. where a guy is abducted and forced to go to this school with all of these hot women. Uh, and it, it's just terrible. It's just terrible how awful this situation is for him. <coughs> and, you know, when you're reading something like this it, or um, watching the show, it it doesn't make a lot of question, of sense to say, well, this premise makes no sense whatsoever. Right. Because it's it's very obviously a, I guess, wish fulfillment vehicle for guys who want to go to a school and be surrounded by pretty Japanese schoolgirls all day. Mm-hmm. It's essentially Fifty Shades of Grey for feminists. I I could kind of see that. I like I said, I don't know if I would necessarily describe that as that. Oh Only well, because not, uh, go ahead. And I was gonna say, and not necessarily for that reason. I mean, definitely, you know, you, you can make the argument at least in the the Hulu version. You know, most of the men that you see are very. Um, how do I put it? They're very masculine. They're they're v- very much what you would consider would be um, attractive to the modern woman, at least. So I can see where you're coming from from that sense. Um, but as far as as far as the book goes, it becomes a mess. It, at one point, it seems like, oh hey, it's a criticism of, um, <clears throat> you know, far right Christian societies, and at the same time, it's like. But wait, isn't couldn't this be a criticism against certain other forms of feminism too? So it's like, so it's just poorly written, which you know is to be expected. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm probably going to spoil the end of the series. And I think if the series doesn't do this, then they've really wasted an opportunity. Uh, the ending of the book was the best part of the book. What was, the and not, what was the ending? And it's not just because of the ending. So basically, the ending happens where you have no idea what happens to Offred, the main character. She gets hauled off somewhere because she wasn't able to give a kid to the commander. And um, <clears throat> what happens was it, it jumps like 100 years in the future. And all of a sudden, Gilead, the society that's supposed to come up from the ashes of America... Um, is gone, and it's basically the Native Americans reclaimed North America and the United States. Okay. Like I said, wish fulfillment. Wish fulfillment. And just the whole thing, it's like, I mean, I I only like that because I feel like it's such a troll. It's like, oh, my God, you made all these people that are enjoying this book care about care about or maybe not even care about like me this character and you fast forward to the future and all of a sudden this failed white society is gone and replaced with 
a modern Native American society where there's like universities and they're taking classes on Anglo American studies? Well, yeah, again, it's not, it doesn't work if you think about this as a real world where you're saying this doesn't make sense because, of course, it doesn't make sense. It's not going to make sense. It's not really supposed to make sense. Yeah. Sense isn't the goal. No, absolutely not. And uh, that's, you know, so that's that's where I came from. It's like it was just pretty much poorly written. And even some of the literary analysis I had to read on it was poorly written uh, and equally painful, believe it or not. Um, and it's, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like we couldn't just leave this back in the 90s where it belongs or the 80s. Well, they're remaking everything else, aren't they? Uh, that's true. That is very true. And, uh, you know, so that's, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much all I really have to say about that. You know, I, there's, there's not a lot of depth to really go into. You might be able to argue that, oh, hey, hey this is a really in-depth, insightful thing. But, uh, no. It's not really any one of those. It's just poorly written fiction. And um, I don't really think Margaret Atwood's a good writer uh, at all. And to add insult to injury, she did recently attempt to write comic books. Oh, God. Is she still alive? Yeah, she's old. In fact, uh, she cameoed as one of the ants in the series from what I heard. Wonderful. Well, we've got about three minutes left if you want to go quickly into our last topic. Okay, so Lacey Green. In fact, I probably should have led with this one, but um, this is something to be watching. Uh, if you're familiar with Lacey Green, um, recently she, she went dark on YouTube and she came back. And uh, she, she's drawn a lot of criticism for, for being a feminist for obvious reasons. Um, you know, she, she was known for having that big uh, breakdown after Trump won the election. And now all of a sudden she's coming back and she's sort of making friends with anti-feminists. Um, people like Blair White. Uh, there's a few other names I don't know of, but it seems like all of a sudden she wants to start a dialogue with these other people. And it's it's kind of interestingly timed, I think. Um, <clears throat> maybe she's just kind of coming to some conclusions about how the world is, and she's maybe thinking that maybe these people that don't share my views aren't horrible Nazis. Is that the sense you're getting? That's kind of the sense I'm getting. Uh, but there, there is something else. Um, when people use the term red pill, and not just in the, the dating or gaming sense, but just in the overall usage along in the greater manosphere and related parts of the Internet, it usually represents sort of an enlightenment. And usually people that, that describe themselves as red pill often have more of a traditional family background, which is something that Lacey does have. She was an ex-Mormon, um, <clears throat> which is kind of telling. She was an ex-Mormon who has now become a pro-sex feminist sex ed YouTube education personality. And uh, <clears throat> I think that'll be something to watch. It depends. There's a lot of people that are sort of decrying Lacey for, um, you know, sort of taking this path or this new stance. And at the same time, there's a lot of people that are defending Lacey for, <clears throat> you know, thinking outside of her box. This sounds like the rantings of a mentally unstable individual to me. Well, yeah, I mean, her mental stability has also come into question. 
over and over again. I think I have a couple thoughts on this. What, what are your thoughts on this first? Well, I mean, my, my thoughts are this. Um, already, we've had the Red Pill movie, which has been making um, some headway here and there about, um, you know, you, you have a feminist filmmaker who, you know, sort of realized that, hey, maybe there's something to these these men's rights activists or something like that. Um, and I, I think it's just maybe she's coming to terms with the way the world is. That's my thought. Uh, I have a couple thoughts. My first is that, yes, it's true that there's a massive amount of, uh, to use the very, very overused term now, thanks to Scott Adams, cognitive dissonance going on in the uh, feminist sphere. Uh, they supposedly want to help women, but they uh, support Muslims who, you know, are treat women worse than anybody in the world. They supposedly want to help children, but they abort them, etc. We all know this. Mm -hmm. And it's quite possible now that things are ramping up that some of them are being forced to confront this. This is, a, remember, some very, very low portion of American women call themselves a feminist. I want to say it's one in three or less. That sounds about right. So it's not inconceivable that, you know, a few of them are finally coming to the realization that what they're supporting just doesn't make any sense and deciding it's time to pack it in and switch to the opposite side. Mm -hmm. My other thought is that it's important not to put too much stock in this uh, just because, again, this is a Mormon turned feminist sex educator, was it? I'd, I'd use educator uh, pretty loosely because I, I don't okay, well, think the she, exact term doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, just yeah. to know that this is a woman who is probably going to have a large number of mental disorders. Mm -hmm. And part of having a large number of mental disorders is that you behave irrationally. That, you know, what you're thinking on any given day may change very quickly because you're crazy. Yes. So I would not be terribly surprised if, you know, okay, now she switched over to um, full MRA dumb, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, in a few weeks, she might be back to being a feminist. Or yeah, she might that, move that on to something into else entirely. And that's important to uh, realize when you're looking at all of these YouTube personalities, a, a lot on both sides, is that many of them are very mentally damaged people. Never That's ever, true. When, when you're hearing something on YouTube, when you're hearing someone say something, never ever give it any kind of credence just because, oh, this is, this person is well regarded, they're, they're teaching me, because it, it's very, it's very, very natural, you know, when you watch a video on something, or when you listen to someone speak on any topic as if they're informed in it, it's very natural to, you know, kind of assume they know what they're talking about, right? Right. That's not the case with these people. They're fucking insane. <laughs> Very true. So when you l listen to Lacey Green, even if you agree with her now, keep in mind she's a nut bar. And really she should be kind of treated accordingly. Right. Um, regardless, it will be interesting to see what happens. I think that's what it comes down to. You know, who 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 will she debate on her channel? Who, you know, who who's going to welcome her with open arms? Who's go, not going to? Uh, well, what will the other crazy say? Yeah, well, there's a lot of uh, people on the MRA side who are doubtless because she's. Do I remember right that she she's fairly pr pretty, or is she one of the land whale ones? Actually, it it depends. It's pretty fifty fifty on that. Um, I would argue that she's one of the more attractive ones. Um, you know, I'd, I'd sleep with her if the opportunity presented okay, itself. Yeah, so, she's, so she's a moderately attractive woman. We'll, we'll just go with that. Uh, spouting uh, MRA uh, red pill stuff. She is going to be absolutely covered in white knights. She's not going to be able <laughs> to get out of her house without a shovel to shovel away all the white knights. Yeah. So, 
I think, uh, no, she's going to find no shortage of people willing to welcome her with open arms. Oh, of course, without a doubt. <clears throat> um, wh whether that'll pay off. And it sounds like she's got a lot of other things on her plate, too. Um, sounds like she's going to go back to school, um, which mm -hmm. is what I'm going to try and do as well, but for completely different reasons. Does she have but, more um, on her plate or in her medicine cabinet? <laughs> well, that depends what you think of uh, public health majors. Oh, dear. Yeah. Putting the nut in charge of the health department. Well, probably for the best. Uh, well, I think that's about all we have for today, correct? Yeah, that, that's about it. Um, I, I think we summed up the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, you know, thanks to the one viewer that tuned in at one point and anybody else that's tuning in later on for the uh, archived version. Thank you and have a good night.